Welcome to the Aesthetics Mastery Show. Have we got a special lockdown treat for you guys, which is we are sharing some never seen before footage from Dr. Tim Live last year, where I go through a full face treatment. We did a 14 mil treatment. We cover treatment design, the anatomy, injection technique for a full face, so tons of stuff to learn. So one of the things that's gonna help me later is if I add volume back here, it's gonna pull that tissue out. But I actually might come back to that. And there's another way of filling the buckle fat pad through here from where you're doing the jawline, you can go up. So I might do that and give me a bit more of an ability to reach slightly deeper. So realizing that all these tissues affect each other. So chin up here, lateral to the face, cheek, jawline, they're, they're all gonna be involved in pulling this structure out. So I'm gonna, going to get at it from all angles. And she has a little, if you can see it, there's a little P shape here, which is an indication for treatment along here. And these little lines above her ear, those all tell me that there's fat, la fat pad loss, which if I, if I add volume here, will pull back. So it's a useful indication to see this, this complexity as well. If you look at the before pictures from 20 years ago, uh, there's none of this complexity. So we can add quite a lot of product here to pull back. So what's directly underneath here? salivary gland. I'm seeing these injuries come through now, which come from, I believe it comes from getting the cannula underneath the parotid fascia. And it feels different if you're in that plane, it's much harder to pass the cannula. And you're effectively tearing the surface of the gland as you're going and the patient then gets something that you might think is a hematoma because it comes up quite quickly. But it's not, it's saliva. So there's no color to it and it swells. One of the other clues is that when they're about to eat something, it swells and then it goes away. So it can be pretty disturbing because sometimes they're quite big. And what we need to do is avoid that by being at the right plane. So the first thing I'm thinking about here as I go under is how do I, how do I make sure that I'm not too deep? I want to be in the fat and replacing a fat pad, not, not replacing a salivary gland. And that's, that's sliding nice and easily for me. So that's giving me confidence. And this is a really good way of lifting without making something look done because you don't really notice this part of the face. It's not a, one of the signs of being overtreated, but it's a powerful way of lifting. It also increases the height the, where the jawline meets. If you can project this bit out, you create that V-shape as part of what you need to create a V-shape, heart shape. I don't want to be anywhere near the nerves here, so I'm also feeling with my finger to make sure that I'm superficial enough. And then a little bit of shaping. Right up here, right at the top is a, is a place I like to try and chase down. So I, I'm going to actually try and put a bit more there. I need a longer cannula actually, if you can put the, yeah. And it's, it's, it's part of the cheek and you can do it as part of the cheek, but the, tr the facial artery emerges, the um, superficial temple artery emer emerges just above it. So I like to do, uh, if I'm going to be this lateral, I like to be with a cannula and, and I'm going to add a bit of volume just in that little shadow. And if you can just see there's a tiny little shadow, it's clearer to me than it will be to you, but that's a great place to try and get a lift. It's on top of the bone. So it's, it's quite a long way from where an entry point is. Uh, if you turn away from me again. Uh, the, yes, it is. That's right. So it should be able to reach all the way up. Now my angle of my cannula, once again, is I'm, I'm angled in such a way that I won't go unnecessarily deep. If your patient jumps, that could be that you're near a nerve, so also another reason to stop. Okay. 
and then a bit of shaping. So we could do the same on the other side and then I'm going to come back, maybe do some chin and then we'll try a bit harder on the buccal area once I've stabilized the other tissue. I'm always trying to think of the of the face as a, as a whole unit um, that in terms of its its, mechan its mechanical elements. So it's those the ability of using different disparate parts of the face to get the result I want rather than just being too distracted by the thing, the main thing I'm trying to solve. If you've ever seen a salivary gland on on a cadaver, they are very similar to fat, but they just have these little bubbles in them, and they they are even in cadavers are still full of saliva, and it's that's why they're so and they're very very thin, so it's very very easy to pierce. And um, as I say, the the main thing is I don't want to feel like I'm got loads of resistance at any point here. I'm trying to get it should slide in quite easily. I'm looking using the reflections to tell where my cannula tip is, which is up here. Can you, um, as if you're on the phone in the 80s, tilt your head slightly that way? That's it. That's probably one of the most useful things I've said today, which is <laughs> tell them to put, go on the phone, and because otherwise you end up with this impossible angle. It's very fidgety. So once again, I'm going to go as superior as I can on top of the zygoma. And I'm shaping it with my finger at the same time. I'm trying to get some of the aesthetic result simultaneously as I'm injecting. And then blending it in a bit, rotating it back, pulling it back, because that's what I want the tissue to do. You can do chins in different orders. I like to the projection and then reconnect it. So what I'll what I'll do first is get is actually it'll look like a downgrade, which is her chin will become more prominent, and then I will connect it afterwards so that it becomes straighter. Um, I might actually do that first and then do some more of the buckle work and then come back to that. I'm, I'm trying to assess how much pull I can create. Um, but chins are, I say now, there's a, there's a, she's got, if you look at the before pictures again, she's got a little groove here which she never used to have as well. So this is something, that little separation here, if I can get that to become the new low point on her chin, that will make a really good difference. So that's going to be my first injection because I know she had a very petite chin with a good angle to it. So I'm completely midline. The other thing is your angle of injection here makes a difference to your aesthetic result. If you're completely inferior, you'll pull it more down. If you're anterior, you'll project it out. I actually want to be for this first injection at about 45 degrees. Should go in, touch the bone. It's very easy to miss the bone at this point. And then you have to go you're probably in the mentalis or underneath. Good aspiration. I'm putting a bit of pressure above because I don't actually want to project her chin forward. I want to project it down more than forward. That's 0 0.2, 0 0.25. So that's step one. So that's made a nice difference already. Now I, I may revisit that, but I'm going to do it in stages when I've found out whether I can project this out. So let's do a. I'm constantly with with patients, just reassessing how the connectivity of the tissues. And one of the things that's crossing my mind is, can I pull the jowl back more by doing uh, some needlework on the bone to pull from behind? Because I really need to get as much as as I possibly can. I'm really digging deep to get this to pull back. So I'm going to think about adding a little bit of volume on the posterior ramus of her mandible. Okay, so entry point. I'm thinking about what can I do with this entry point? How can I cover as many places as possible? So I definitely want to cover this connection here, that one there, that one here. But um, I'm also thinking about going back into this um, on both sides, adding some volume from, from inferiorly. 
So we'll see how that works. If you can turn, go back on the phone, shoulder, hold, that's it. So this angle does allow me to go a little bit deeper. As far as the, the uh, buckle fat pad is concerned, but I'm quite far away, so I'm not going to be too near any of the important structures. Oh, I am crossing where the archery might be, so that's making me very respectful of any resistance that I get. A little pop through there, so I'm going to give a good long aspiration. A little bit of pressure so that I get the shape that I want. It's flowing very easily, getting very little resistance. And some of this I'm now going to do slightly more superficially, just in the hope that I get some of the super, more superficial ripples as well as the deeper volume. And Voluma is a very good product for using at different layers my experience. Okay. So the, the sense of, it, of battling is good in terms of your learning. I still feel like I'm, you know, I'm really, I really want this to lift more and I'm, I'm constantly challenging myself to think what else can I do and, and a, a lot of people in my experience of mentoring people is they feel like that's the point that they're failing and I think I've said it already like that's that's when you get really good at this because you've you're challenging your brain like think harder what else can I do where's another lift point um, and the, the more you do that the more you start to understand the face actually works sorry jumping ahead okay if you rotate uh, yeah back on the phone that's it Can't really do that with mobile phones. It's a it's a lost art holding a phone between your ear. Can I get a little swab on that? Sometimes when the skin tethers as you're putting the cannula in, it's actually quite a good sign. It means if you lift the tissue above where the cannula is actually pushing, there's a connection there that might lift what's beneath. So just in my mind, I'm thinking constantly about all the contributing factors here. I'm thinking about position of the cannula, the theoretical presence of the artery, the fat pad that I'm trying to replace, the, the way the light is catching her skin and the connection I'm trying to create between the, the corner of her mouth and her cheek where there's an interruption. And I'm looking for signs that I'm getting close to that adjust adjusting my approach each time i knew it would take a lot of volume this is one of the areas that to take the most takes the most volume as i said uh, i think i said in the presentation that your buckle fat pad is 16 to 20 mils just that so um i mean the original size of it and it shrinks so it wouldn't be surprising to put even five mils in that's that smile is helpful though so i going back to her story she, she said in her story that she was smiling less 
and one of the things is that tiny crease that's this is how you kind of build a treatment plan around you around your stories because i'm going to go for that crease even though I, we all might be wowed by the lack of a shadow when she smiles i want to get rid of that now i also know a lot of you are thinking well that's all well and good this is all very expensive no one's actually going to pay for it <laughs> that's a knowing laugh so that's that's also one of my limiting beliefs is that but the, what what has changed is the price point at which it becomes limiting it's currently four thousand pounds i think is people's limit um so we we do that like a couple of times a month at least but it all hinges on the consultation that i've just demonstrated on if you're speaking to someone on the right level the the budget absolutely goes up because they know that you understand them and they know how if it's important to them, the budget is different. This will also last, hopefully, a very long time. I've seen, I saw someone on Thursday come back for a follow-up from four years ago, whose tear troughs lasted four years. So you do get them. I wouldn't sell that. I wouldn't tell people they're gonna get four years out of a treatment. But it does happen, and mostly, and I know this actually from Miranda, who thinks her, her treatment like it definitely hasn't. <laughs> and that's because we all have our, our insecurities and we notice things and we're worried about it coming back. And actually, a lot of the time, there's actually benefit from, an, from a treatment that lasts way longer than people perceive. Um, so it, once again, it depends, it depends on the patient. Um, I'm after, I love doing it all in one sitting. I'm in my ele element. I'm in my elephant. I'm on my elephant. <laughs> You've all seen me on my elephant probably. But <laughs> if you've seen the complications webinar. But it's, um, uh, yeah, I, I, I like it. It gives more flexibility. Most, most patients are, are if, they're, if you get someone like Lindsay, it's, it's not a bad deal for them. They, they quite enjoy it if it's not sore. Um, but the the honest answer is it depends on what the patient feels. Like you design the journey around their individual expectations and their fear um, points. But yeah, I, I think I mean if you think about what twenty mils is, um, I don't think for most of the complications that it's you know you can dissolve twenty mils quite easily. In fact, I, I've dissolved a, a twelve mil treatment before, and it's, it's a miserable situation, obviously. But it's no it's no more difficult than dissolving two mils. You you same risks in terms of allergies and stuff. Um, it's okay. I, I don't I don't feel like it's it feels because we're not used to it. Like when 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 you've only ever done four mils, the idea of doing twenty seems huge. But when you've done ten a hundred times, it it doesn't feel. A lot of it's quite. It's just to do with what you make your territory in terms of what you're used to doing. When you first start out, it's not a good idea to put yourself under too much pressure and trying to do it all in one go. So you might, then, in which case, do it in sessions. You tell your patient it's for their benefit. I like to do it. It's for your benefit. <laughs> okay. Uh, if you rotate away from me again, we'll go through that little entry point. In fact, I might slightly change that entry point. I want to bridge this gap here with this fat pad and that one. So I'm going to go just behind it. Sorry, I picked up the wrong one. So volumes for chin, um, I usually would use around three mils in total on a, re on a restoration. But you can get a good difference just from one if it's about focusing, just rotating the chin back down. But here we're doing a combination. I want to connect the chin and jawline. I want to replace this fat pad here and support the oral commissure so that the DAO is no, not as, as able to pull the corners of the mouth, that mouth down. And I want to replace the fat pad underneath the mental crease. And we've already focused the chin on the other side. Okay. And this is where it starts to come together in terms of a full face treatment. Okay, can I have some Volux? I'm told I'm running out of time, but we're getting there.
it's very it's very rare. I, I know a lot of there's been a lot of talk about Vicross being um, reactive, and we the first thing I saw when I when I saw that was you know, I put a lot of Vicross in to my friends and family. You know, so <laughs> it's not it's very important to me that I that it's not a high risk product. So we've audited um, years worth of treatment and um, thousands of cases, and we got exactly what the published in fact 0.1 percent less than what the published data says, a 0.04. Um, so I don't know where I, it's almost like a meme. It's almost like it catches, it catches fire, like the idea of it, and then people go looking, and every time there's a reaction, they reinforce the idea. But I, I don't think the data supports it. Otherwise, I would stop using it. So just notice what I'm doing with my finger supporting hand. I do a lot of trying to support and shape as a sculptural element that isn't about the tip of the cannula. The other thing is going through my mind is this is going to be hard to adjust this jowl. So I actually want to project the, the jawline slightly down to get it straight. So I'm actually slightly on the inferior border intentionally. What happens if I run late, Fiona? Do they just turn the lights off? <laughs> so up, uh, if you go back on the phone for me again, that's great. So right up to the oral commissure again. along the mental crease. <laughs> I'm bending the cannula now with the with my fingers on top to allow me to get around that corner. Um, okay. So look at that mental crease has come up phenomenally well. Um I think I'm going to just do a couple of passes with some bow lift just to make sure it stays that way. Does, no. Unless, well, unless Lindsay did some I didn't know about. No. Okay, let's go for this little crease, which I said about if you could lean uh, back on the phone again for me. So needle will be better for this just to get that little fold. Now there's probably a muscle that's pulling this from underneath. Um, there's a connection in the skin. So it's your dimples, which are fine, but I need to, un I need to separate the surface of the skin from the effect of that muscle. Yes, you could use Volbella as well but I'm just in the superficial, in the deep dermis, just above the hypodermis. And uh, hopefully that's just a tiny little area of, the, a visual highlight is the kind of thing, you can learn a lot by watching someone on Photoshop make someone look more beautiful because they chase every detail and sometimes you, you're a bit surprised where they're going as they start editing the picture and then you see it make the effect. A lot of what we do is trying to see those little tiny areas, potential areas of improvement. I'm going to try and just do a little bit more lift by getting this posterior aspect. The ramus here. So I'm just trying to find anywhere that will lift. Now, it's an easy place to miss the bone, so don't plunge it all the way in. Okay. 
I'm not trying to create extra definition. She's actually got definition. I'm just trying to add a bit of volume and then smooth it in. So Volift is a good fat emulator if, I don't, if you don't want definition. So this the, the bit that's catching me is I, I would love a straight jawline. And I'm just trying to think what are the ways I can do to do that. Um, this side, actually the side that was hollower has, has lifted more. So I'm going to, let's, yeah, Volux with a cannula, we'll do that. I'm going to try a little tiny touch just here at this junction point with the needle. It's a good place if you want a really stable injection. That will be a good support point. Ah. So I'm after the lift, the hardest bit, as I said right at the beginning. She closed her eyes there and made me think, am I in a, on a nerve? And it um, makes me change. It's good to watch your patients. Some people like to, I'm a bit like this. You know, when you're at the hairdresser, I always like to try and anticipate which, you, which direction he wants my head to turn so I can do it. And they're, they're trying to be helpful. And um, someone will suppress what they're feeling. And actually, I always tell them not to. Just let me know. So I'm just checking for any any little irregularities I missed the first pass because I like I don't want to leave her that way even though this is a little show I could just say oh because it, it looks fine but I don't want her to feel it so that's great we're all done thank you very much Lindsay let us know in the comments what you think was the most useful thing or if you've got any questions and we will answer them during lockdown so thanks very much for watching see you next week.